Hello again. I'm just going to do a little quick video on uh, some fundamental wire working steps. Um, kind of using this as a prerequisite for other tutorials and other things like that. Um, all right. So for this, I am going to basically show you how to make wire links, both basic and wrapped form, so you can make fancy earrings like this. You can get really fancy, actually. Um, so what you will need for this is some wire. Um, for using 22 gauge, it's pretty much what I use basically for any, what size I use for um, any of my linking projects. I find it's sturdy enough, uh, but not stiff enough like 20 gauge. And it, I've noticed that whenever I use something smaller like 24 gauge, it tends to break and uh, get weakened over time. Now the gauges are kind of confusing because what they are basically, basically the larger the number, the smaller the diameter of the wire, but um, any kind of wire will really do. I tend to use artistic wire because the colors that they use don't tend to chip when you're making links. You will also need a set of chain nose pliers. These are the um, basically for gripping. A set of round nose pliers to make the shape of the wire and a cutting tool of some form. I tend to use a flush cutter because I'm able to get in there easier rather than using a regular cutting tool like this. This is basically a, um, what you find anywhere, but a flush cutter is much more pointed and jagged. And depending on what links you want to use and what technique you want to use, you might need a couple of jump rings to attach your links. Okay, for the start, I'm going to show you a basic wrapped loop. So what you'll need to do is cut a length of wire that you're comfortable with. It takes practice to get um, an exact measurement of what you want to use and a feel for what you need to do. But I'm using about a two-inch piece of wire right now. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your round nose pliers. You're going to grip it about a half inch from the top. You're going to rotate it away from you. And you're going to take the short end and wrap it over the top tooth of the pliers. You're going to pull it out. And then you're going to put the loop on the bottom tooth of the pliers. And then you're going to kind of reform it and shape it up. So you end up with a loop like that. Now take your cutters, and what you'll do is you will nip off a piece right where the two intersect. So go ahead and cut. And then to neaten it up, you're going to take a pair of chain nose pliers and just kind of push it together so you form a nice little neat hoop. Then you're going to slide your bead on do the same thing for the other side. So grip the wire pretty close to the bead. Rotate it away from you. Take the excess and wrap it over. Pull the top tooth out. Stick it back into the bottom tooth. Finish the shape by bending it around. And then cut once more. Use a pair of chain nose pliers to kind of neaten up what it looks like. Like that. And you're done. Now, in order to attach it to another set of links, all you have to do is open one end. Slide the link on, and then close it. Like that. That one's pretty simple. I tend not to use them because I'm paranoid about the links and the joins, so I tend to actually prefer to use wrapped links instead.
Okay, now to make a wrapped loop, what you're going to do is take a little bit longer piece of wire. Again, it'll take some feel to gauge how much you want to use. And what you can do is pretty much start the same way. You're going to grip it a little longer, about one inch to a half inch, depending on what you get comfortable it with. Uh, when you start doing this longer, you'll be able to use, be able to do this technique with a lot shorter wire. So grip it at about an inch from the top, bend it away from you, take the short end and wrap it over the top tooth of the pliers, and you're going to pull it out, so you're going to put that, slide in the bottom tooth, then you're going to finish making the shape by bending it around. Pull it out, and now you've got this little tiny tail to work with. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a set of chain nose pliers, and you're going to tightly coil the wire, excess wire, around the longer piece, or the anchoring piece. This definitely takes a bit of practice to get the uh, coil flush with the rest of the loop. It has taken me years to get it right. But, and there you have a coil. But you have this little nasty tail that get really sharp, and this is why I like the flush cutters. So you can get real up close and tight with it, and just cut it off. Now, I tend to be a little reckless, so but uh, be careful when you're cutting the uh, tiny piece off of it, because it has a tendency to fly, and it wouldn't be fun to have it in your eye. So, it's still kind of jagged, and if you've used it like this in a piece of jewelry, it will tend to cut into skin. So what I like to do is take a chain nose pliers again and just kind of bend the sharp end in a little bit. It's a little awkward doing this in the camera. But yeah, really awkward. Just kind of squish it. kind of matches the coil. Okay. And then you're going to add your bead. Now to join this with another link, you have a couple of techniques. So what you will basically do for the first technique is you will start off like normal, grip it right close to the bead, and bend it away from you. Then you wrap it over the top tooth, pull it out, put it on the bottom tooth, and then finish the shape. Now before you continue with the coil, what you're going to want to do is open it up a little bit and slide on another link or your chain. Push it back down. Then grab it with the pliers again and finish the coil. Cut off the end, and then neaten up the little sharp bits. What you can also do is take a jump ring and make a bunch of links at the same time, and then when you're done, join them all together with a jump ring. So basically, open one. And then you have one end and another end. And you close it. Probably better with another set of chain nose pliers, but close the ring. And there you have it. It's all a matter of preference. I tend to like this method better with the jump rings because it adds more flexibility with the chain because I find that using this technique though it's more secure and it won't pop off and you won't be scared of that um, the links itself tend to twist and form weird kinks in your chain that don't really that you constantly need to twist, untwist and fix but 
That's about it with links. You can get really, really fancy with it. It does take a lot of practice to get the circles just right and the tension just right. Um, also, another tip, if you, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but if you have a problem making uniform circles and links that are the same size, I recommend marking one of your teeth of your round nose pliers with your favorite widths, with like a sharpie or a paint pen. Um, I've got two here, one like right there and one there, far off. But that is pretty much it. The best way to probably practice this technique is to make probably chains of random beads. To make them into bracelets or necklaces or um, like eyeglass holders I've seen. But with this it's pretty much unlimited what you can do with it. It's pretty a fundamental step uh, technique. But that is it. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.